Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be sharing my current everyday makeup routine with you. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to film and I realized I haven't done just a traditional everyday makeup routine video. I do my everyday makeup drawers at the beginning of the month and I do some makeup in those videos but usually over the course of using all those products I kind of get a set routine that I start doing. So I figured I would share the routine I've been doing for everyday makeup with you. So I hope you enjoy. I have a really good collection of products that I'm really liking right now. So that's what we're gonna do today and I love everyday makeup videos. I could watch them all day long. I love it. So that's what we're gonna do today. If you're new, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty and makeup content here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I hope you'll subscribe and let's go ahead and get into the video. I'm going to start with my Anastasia Brow Freeze. This has been my go-to and if I'm kind of in a hurry and I'm trying to do my brows quickly, I've just been using the e.l.f. Wow Brow. But since I'm filming and I have more time today, I'm gonna do the Brow Freeze. And I always do this first because I have found if you do this type of product after you've put on foundation and concealer and everything, sometimes it kind of picks it up as you're brushing through and then it gets all gunky and kind of weird. So that's why I always do it first. I've been really into primers lately. So I've been using my e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. I just really, really like this stuff. I feel like it actually does make a difference in how my makeup lasts throughout the day. And then I have been using a little bit of the Flawless Filter in shade number two. Just really just kind of on my cheekbones like this. And then I haven't been putting it really anywhere else lately. This is the one that's in my project pan, so I've been trying to make sure that I use it. I'm gonna use this Sephora number 64 brush. It's actually for foundation, but I like it for a flawless filter or primer in general because it's kind of a stippling type brush. So it blends, but it applies things really sheerly. I've been really loving this NARS in Toffee. I think in one of my last videos I said it was shade Honey. It's not. It's shade Toffee. And I used, I've been using this as my corrector. And I don't use very much because it is a concealer. So honestly, you really don't need a lot. I just kind of been applying it. I have the most darkness and then I let it sit for like 30 seconds to a minute and then I just start lightly blending this out and I'm actually using a little eyeshadow brush to do this and do you see what a difference that makes it's just crazy I have fallen back in love with this. I cannot stop using it. The Fenty Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint in the shade number three is such a good match for me when I'm at my fairest, which I am right now. But I just started using this again and I cannot stop using it. It's like the perfect finish too. It's not too glowy, but it's not matte. It's just a really pretty natural finish and I don't know, something about it I just love. I'm gonna use this Hourglass foundation brush to start stippling and blending this in. So I'm just kind of tapping this in and this skin tint I would say is definitely buildable and you can get a pretty solid light medium coverage with it I would say I don't know that you can get like a full full medium but it's pretty good for a skin tint 
Okay, and then because that toffee shade does so much under my eyes, I literally take just one little dot of creme brulee also from NARS and I put it like right there. And honestly, I could probably get away with not doing that, but I feel like the toffee shade is just a little bit too dark on its own for under my eyes. And the creme brulee is a little bit lighter, but it has the same undertone. So I just very lightly add a little bit of that, just mainly right here in this inner corner where I have the most darkness. And I just kind of lightly apply that. And I've been loving this brush also, this BK Beauty 110. It's one of their new brushes. I think it's called the Large Concealer Brush, but I love it. It's up there at this point with my Sigma F03, which is saying a lot, because you know how much I love that brush. But this one gives a very similar effect. I'm going to take my sponge and just kind of tap over everything. And I wanted to tell you guys, maybe it's just me that just realized this. Maybe everybody's been doing this for a long time. But I was on Instagram the other day and I was just scrolling on the explore page and this video popped up and it was not somebody that I follow. I don't remember. It was a woman. I don't remember who she was, but she was saying instead of washing your sponges individually, like in the sink with your makeup brushes, you should put them all together in a laundry bag, like a lingerie bag and just wash them in warm water in your washing machine. And I did that yesterday. And my sponges, like now they have, this one has a little bit of product because I've been using it, but my sponges all came out perfectly clean. Like they look brand new, all of them. And I washed them all at one time. Am I the only person that hasn't been doing that? I don't know why I always, or why I never thought to do that. And then I have been using this every day for, I don't know, at least two weeks now. This is just my go-to right now. The Skin Enhancer from Makeup by Mario in light medium. This is just so good. I feel like, again, I loved this when it came out, but I don't know. It's like I've rediscovered it in the last few weeks, and now I'm like obsessed with it. I couldn't even really tell you why, to be honest. I just, I love everything about it. I love how easy it is to apply. I love the color. This is light medium. And I have his sculpting stick too. The one in the stick, obviously, that's more opaque. It's more, it just has more pigment to it. And that one I have in the shade light. And I'm kind of thinking about getting the shade light medium because I think one of the things I like a lot about this product in particular is this shade. I don't know. I just really like the light medium tone. So I'm thinking about getting that color in the shaping stick or maybe even in his powder bronzer. I don't know. If you have either one of those, let me know what you think, but I just can't get enough of this stuff. And I'm using a Sephora 56 brush right now to apply it. But honestly, this product is so easy to use. It really doesn't matter what you use. And then for blush, sometimes I do a cream and a powder. Lately, I've, I've really been reaching for my powders a little bit more though. And I've either been using the blushes from the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palette or I also really like the blush in this iconic London duo, the duo I got during the Sephora sale. Kind of similar color to the Pillow Talk, but it just kind of depends on the day, what I'm in the mood for. Today, I think, mm, I think I wanna use Pillow Talk palette and go in with this rosy color. I'm gonna use this Smashbox angled blush brush 
And I saw something else the other day that was talking about blush placement. I want to say it was TikTok. I think it was the makeup artist that does Selena Gomez. If you're on TikTok, you may know who I'm talking about. But she was talking about um, blush placement. And she was saying typically on most people, the best blush placement starts at the outer corner of your eye and goes to the tail of your brow. Have you guys ever heard that? I never heard that in that way before, but that's what she said. So I've been trying to keep that in mind. And then I've been taking this Dior powder. This is the powder no powder in four neutral. And I've been using this to set that Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer with. And I've been using this brush from, also from Makeup by Mario, the F2, the double-ended brush. And I've been using the larger end. And then I've literally just been like stamping over where we put that skin enhancer. I was watching earlier today the video that Carly Bible did. I guess it was like a year ago or so. She had Mario on her YouTube channel and he did her makeup. And I've watched the video before, but I went back and was watching it again because I just love to, I love to watch makeup artists do makeup. And in the part where he applies the bronzer, he was talking about how he loves to use this brush and to just like lightly kind of tap the face instead of like going like this or doing anything that's going to move the makeup underneath. Just thought that was interesting, but he was using this brush, the F2, and he just kind of, he kind of stamps all over the face, which I feel like that's kind of what I try to do most of the time. Cause I just feel like if you don't, you move too much of your product underneath and then it's like you've ruined all the work that you've done, you know? And I have been powdering my face pretty much every day and I've been using the House Labs powder the Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder. I This has been my favorite powder lately, believe it or not. I haven't said that, I feel like, in a long time where I had a favorite powder, really since the Kosas powder came out, but this one has just been it for me. You guys, I am telling you, it is absolutely blurring. Like, at first, when I read that, with powders I immediately usually think like no it's not <laughs> it's not gonna blur your skin okay this one on me at least right here it does I swear it just takes any pore away it's amazing and this has been also my new obsession for powder this brush the one I was saying Jessica Braun recommended the number 55 from Sephora. It's actually a foundation brush, but this is the perfect size for powder. I'm going to take a little bit of the pinky highlighter in this palette, and I've just been popping just a little bit of this just right here on the very top of my cheekbone. You don't really need a lot especially because I have the flawless filter underneath. Now it is time to fill in the brows. And honestly, I kind of do this differently every day, I feel like. Sometimes, depending on how much time I have, I'll just kind of fill in up here in my arch, at the top of the arch, I guess, because that's where I'm missing the most brow hair. But then other times I'll take my pencil and kind of underline the shape on the bottom. And then I kind of fill in where I need to, which is mainly right here on both brows. And this is, of course, my CoverGirl <laughs> pencil because now I just can't seem to use anything else. 
And then I always make sure I use my spoolie just to redistribute the product through. And that's honestly really it. Sometimes I add a little bit really lightly to the very front right here, but I try not to do much there. For my eyes, I've been back on this from Rem Beauty. It's the matte cream eyeshadow in the shade Later. So I put this all over and it's basically just evens out my lid and just adds like a tiny, tiny bit of color to my eyelids, but honestly it's very, very minimal. But I love the color and I love how easy this formula is. It's very liquidy and it blends pretty much instantly. And then I use my Dior powder again in 4 Neutral and I use a fluffy brush and I put that all over. Put it in my crease and I kind of go over my lid with it as well. And then I kind of pull it out here just to kind of connect where we used it on my face. Sometimes I leave it like this and leave it all matte, but a lot of times I'll take this, again from Makeup by Mario, I realize I'm using a lot of, a lot of his products, but this is the Master Crystal Reflector in Bronzite. It's just a really beautiful bronzy topper for your eyes. And I will just put this on the lid and kind of tap it up just a little bit and it just kind of adds a little bit of something extra. I don't do that every single day, but I do it a lot. And then I do take the Dior powder again. This is such a great product, you guys. I kind of want to start trying more face powders as bronzer because this one is like the perfect shade. It's really nice. I love it. And again, sometimes I do my liner, my eye powder from Charlotte Tilbury. I was thinking about it, but I actually think I might just leave the eyes today as is. So I'm going to curl my lashes as always. And then before I do mascara, something else I've been doing lately is taking a little spoolie and really just brushing through my eyelashes before I do my mascara. Some of my lashes kind of grow together, I feel like, and certain mascaras don't separate them as well, so I find that if I do this, it helps sometimes. I feel like my lashes sometimes grow in like little clusters. Anyway, so I've been doing that. And I've either been using the Tower 28 mascara or this one. I'm going to use this one because this is just my favorite right now. Actually, you know what? Let's use... I forgot. I have L'Oreal Telescopic also in black brown, which is just a little bit darker than this one. This one is just brown. This one is black brown. This mascara is good, but what I will say about it is it does, if I don't do that lash separating thing, I feel like this mascara gets clumpy. Or maybe not the formula is clumpy, but it clumps my lashes together. I don't know. It makes them look long, which I like, but I also feel like it can be kind of clumpy. I think I've said that before on here about this mascara. I love the color and I love the length that it gives, but I do feel like, and it may just be my lashes, the way they are and the way they grow. I don't know, but I feel like it can be a little clumpy. For the lips, 
I switch the lip liner. I either do Structure from Pat McGrath or I really like Pillow Talk 2 from Charlotte Tilbury. I really like the Pillow Talk one if I wear that Pillow Talk blush palette. So that is Pillow Talk 2. And then sometimes I switch this up a lot, honestly. Lately though, I have been, well, this isn't really a new thing. I either use the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow on my lips or I use my new YSL. I think I'll use YSL in number 44. And then my gloss lately has been Fenty Fussy. That's been the one I've been using more than anything. All right, you guys, this is the final look. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love everyday makeup routines. Seriously, I could watch them all day, and I pretty much do. I watch them all the time on YouTube, TikTok. Instagram, wherever. I just love it. I think it's so interesting to see what people use on a daily basis. So I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe and follow me over on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair1. And I will see you next time. Everything will be listed and linked below for you. And I will see you next time. Remember, simply be you. Bye.